Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Well, hello. Hey, everybody. Dr. Regina Patrick here. I am your minister of motivation. I am your mentor for manifestation. Praise God. And I get the honor and privilege to pastor these amazing people here at Life Changers Ministries. You can get the information at the end of this video, how you can be a member or a part of what we're doing here at Life Changers because we are changing the world for Jesus, one mind and one life at a time. Glory to God. Glad you're here. This is a good word tonight. So you want to get in and take copious notes. Praise God. We've been talking about the accelerated abundant life. How do you experience accelerated abundance? And uh, this is a good word. Come on, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time around the word as we sit at the master's feet. Glory to God. This is our decision. It is our choice, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we just thank you because we already know you will honor your word in the name of the Lord. God, now we ask you to just cause a fresh wind to blow over this word. God, and all over this social media platform that those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. God, we ask that, that you would just have, cause a fresh wind to blow on this teaching time. Lord God, give me your servant, Father God. Hallelujah. Tonight, right now, in Jesus' name, give me the mind. Just think through my mind. Give me the mind of Christ and think, uh, think through my mind. Just speak through my vocal cords. Lord God, and give us all ears. Give us ears to hear what Holy Spirit is saying in this time. In the name of all names, above every name, in Jesus' name we pray and give you praise come on y'all say amen. amen amen praise god amen, amen. tonight amen. we're talking about are you willing to just do it are you willing to just do it so accelerated abundance i want to just do a refresher real real quick of accelerated abundance okay what does that mean accelerated means to speed up and to go at a faster rate than usual Okay, to speed up, to go at a faster rate of, than usual, it is to change the velocity. Oh, y'all better come on. Oh, man, I was hyped when I saw this. It means to change the velocity. Praise God. Amen. To change the velocity and to do it. I really like this. To do it with the quickness. Ah, come on. So this is uh, accelerated is something that, that does not happen over a long period of time. It's not molasses. It's not slow. Okay. It is quick. It is fast. It is something that happens and, and it changes the velocity. That means the situation is this way now, but look, hey, it's all changed. It's changed in the twinkling of an eye in a very limited amount of timing. Praise God. It has all been rectified. It has been of change. It has been altered. Glory to God for in Jesus' name. So we're talking about having this accelerated ab abundance with the Lord, this accelerated abundant uh, life. And so I remind you, abundance means to have more than enough. It means to have no shortages. Oh my God. Oh, Lord have mercy. It means to have a surplus or plenty, plenty or in great quantities. Mm. In great quantities, my God. So we're talking about to something that will happen expediently with the quickness and it will result in you having this manifested thing in great quantities. Amen. That there will be no lack to it. There will be no limits to it. Glory to God. It will be abundantly or way more than enough. Great quantities. I like that. How about you? Our theme for this, uh, all the month of April, we've been believing God for this accelerated abundance, this supernatural thing that happens quick, fast, and in a hurry, and there's plenty of it, okay? <laughs> it's not just a small, minute, a small a fraction of something, but it is grand. It's big. It's huge. It's ginormous, all right? It's a big deal. And so that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. That's what he saying to us and so we're excited about it the thing comes out from the scripture over in amos 9 over in amos 9 i love this rendition and a couple of different readings and translations but over in amos 9 says let me get it it says behold behold glory to god the days come and saith the lord 
that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth the seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, hallelujah, and the hill shall melt. Wow. That means that while you while you sowing that thing, you're gonna reap it. Why why you you know there's a scripture that says, While you're yet praying, God answers. My God. That's what this accelerated abundance looks like. That's what is happening in this accelerated abundance. And I've come to understand and believe that there is a fresh anointing on acceleration. Glory to God. That God is saying to the people, and is saying to his people, to the church. He said, Don't you recognize I'm doing a quick work. I'm doing a quick thing. Glory to God. And so we should get excited about it. Our faith should get stirred. Amen. To see this accelerated abundance. So I'm really, really excited about the story and the content of scripture that we're going to look at. Go with me to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, right? The Gospel of Luke. Go to Luke chapter 5, and we're going to pick up an amazing story. And I want you to stay with me as we just kind of open up, you know. As, this is like a lobster meal tonight, okay? <laughs> You're going to have to, in a crab meal, you're going to have to dig in to get the meat. You're going to have to dig in to get this, all right? So come and dig in the Word of God with me. Praise Jesus. Amen. You know, sometimes when you dig deep, you get the better pearls. Yeah, come on. How about that? So let's dig, take a little dive, a deeper dive tonight. Glory to God into scripture. All right. So this is Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and it is Luke chapter five. And I absolutely love this. Let me, this is, um, and we're familiar with the story. We're not new to this. We're true to this. We know how it went down, but let's, like I said, let's just evolve a little bit deeper into this. All right. It's Peter, Simon Peter. And we're going to see this accelerated, abundant miracle that manifested in the twinkling of an eye. Just in, it just happened absolutely how Jesus said it would happen. I don't want to lose my notes here. They're falling. All right, so let's go. It is, it is Luke chapter 5, all right? Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to start here in um, uh, 1. Let me go to start at 1, okay? And this is how it reads. It says, I got my old school. Yep, I use an old school real Bible. Sometimes I use my phone, but for the most part, I like, I like to study with my old school Bible. So let's use it tonight. It says, Luke chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw there were two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. That's important. Don't forget that, okay? They were washing their nets. And verse 3, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon Peter's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out the ship, okay? Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Now, Lot, did you catch that though? Did you catch that in verse 3? It says he sat down and taught the people from the ship. So he tells him, he said, launch out, because at first Jesus was right on the beach line, the shoreline with the people, but it was a lot of them. It was a whole lot of them. It said the people pressed. The people pressed and took him to hear the word. Ooh, we could stop there and preach all day, couldn't we? Mm, Sometimes you need to press into Jesus and get your word. Mm -mm. You need to press in to get your word. You need to press into the master and just get close as you can. Hallelujah. So these people were thrown in. It was a lot of them. And Jesus wanted to minister to all of them. So he asked Peter, he said, let me use your boat. And he gets in the boat. He tells him, he said, now just go back a little bit into the water. And then Jesus takes a seat and he begins to teach, amen, these people that are on the shoreline sitting there that have come to receive a word from heaven, to come to receive a word of the Lord. Praise God. And the Bible says, and when he was done, verse 4, 
<clears throat> and when he was through, Jesus had did his teaching. Jesus had spent time with the people. He had spoken the word into their life, into their soul, into their heart. Amen. And he had ministered to them. Then he looks at Peter. Glory to God. Verse 4. It says, now when he had left speaking, church was over. They had given the benediction. Amen. They had sent everybody on their way. And now he looks at Simon Peter. He says, now launch out into the deep. Ah, oh, somebody say, can we go deeper? Sometimes you need to go a little deeper. Sometimes you got to go a little further. Sometimes you got to put in that little extra. Come on. And Jesus says, now launch out into the deep and then let down your nets. Please make note of that in verse 4. It says, N-E-T-S, let down your nets. Okay? Amen. So he's not talking about a... Uh, 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 singular, he said, let down your nets so that you can get a big catch, a draw, a big catch. Amen. Verse five, and Simon now answers. <laughs> now he's going to now talk to Jesus, who Jesus just said, go deeper, go further into the water. Hallelujah. And let down your nets. And Simon answers in verse five and says unto him, master, we have toiled. Come on all the night and we have taken in nothing nevertheless nevertheless that's a huge word he says nevertheless at thy word i will let down glory to god the net my god that is so rich right there hallelujah that is so rich right there amen so um he tells them, he said, let down your nets with an S. Go deeper into the water. Let down your net. Put them on the opposite side. Another rendition, uh, uh, another verse says, throw your, throw your nets on the opposite side. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And prepare for a big haul. And Peter says, oh, God, come on, Jesus. Uh, and, and you can kind of engage in your thinking, this, this dialogue, this conversation. First of all, Jesus is a carpenter. Peter is a professional at what he does. He's an expert. He was not new to this. He was true to this. He, had, he was a professional fisherman. This was his livelihood. He knew, uh, and in that region of, uh, this was the, 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 uh, the, the Galilean Sea, the Sea of Galilee. In that region, you did not, you did not even attempt to fish in the day. Besides, there were so many people on the water bank, amen, the fish, that wasn't a very likely experience to have any kind of catch or success fishing in the day. That wasn't likely to happen, praise God. Uh, but Jesus told him, do it anyway. See, they fished at night. He says, Master, we have toiled. We have worked at this all night long. We ain't got nothing. Maybe a few minnows, I don't know. But he said, we, it, we were not successful. We've done this all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. Hallelujah. At thy word, I will. At thy word, I love that. Nevertheless, at that word, I will let down the net. And it, Simon says net, N-E-T. Uh, come on, and we're going to come back and revisit that. And the Bible says in verse 6, And when they had done, and when they had this done, they enclosed, listen, a great, y'all better buckle your seat, boo. When they had done this, they encountered, listen, a great multitude of fishes. A great multitude. Oh, my Jesus. When they had done this, they had encountered a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. Are you serious? And their nets break, praise God. And verse 7 says, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, that they should come and help them. Come on, somebody. They needed some a little help. So can we get a little help over here? He said, they beckoned for them to come and help them. And they came and they filled not one, but both ships. Come on. They filled both, both ships so that to the point that both ships begin to sink. Oh, wow. Hold up. Both ships begin to sink. 
My God, there's a couple of things here that I, I, I just got excited about. I don't want to go too fast. I got to come back and revisit. Check this out. It says that when they were done, amen, working, they had not been successful at it. They had toiled. Toil means labored. It means worked. And they had done so all night. So they were tired and they were aggravated and they were frustrated. Might have been even a little angry, you know, because you've been doing something for so long. How many of y'all can relate to that? You've been working hard, but you didn't get paid. Hmm. Come on. See, this, this, this was their business. This was their livelihood. So if, if you were not successful in that, your hall, you didn't have no money. You didn't have nothing to make the exchange with, praise God. And so we see here that they worked all night, but they didn't get paid. Can anybody relate to that? Do you feel like, oh, my God, I've been doing this, that, and the other. I, I've, been, I've been grinding. I've been hustling. I've been doing my thing. I've been doing what the Bible said to do. I've been trying to live holy. I've been trying to. Anybody out here, you've been working, but you didn't get the right pay. You've been working hard, but, but you don't see no results of it. Anybody been working and you're laboring, you're like Peter, you're tired. And, and you feel like the Bible say they washed their nets. Anybody been washing their nets? That means, you know, they were going through the motion. They didn't catch nothing. They had thrown this a net out, they had thrown this thing out and it drew in nothing. It was crickets, it was nothing. It was no success to that. Come on, Holy Spirit, praise God. And so it was a wrap. They in there mending their nets, they preparing their nets to put them away. They done, it's a wrap. Anybody got your a resignation letter ready? Anybody ready to quit? I feel this in my spirit. Does somebody feel like you worked hard and you worked long, but you ain't got no results? You didn't put in the, you didn't grind, you didn't put in the work with your children, and you ain't seeing no results. No, you ain't, you're not getting back what you've exerted. You're not getting back what you've prayed for. You've prayed long and you've prayed hard, and you're not seeing no results. Hallelujah. There's somebody, glory to God, sometimes, you know, you just work and work and work at the marriage, and you still don't see no success. You still don't see the payday. You still don't see the payoff. You didn't forgave people, and you're still getting jacked up. People still mistreating you. Anybody with me that you're putting in the work, you're doing the work the best you know how. You're working hard. You're toiling. You're working. You're grinding. You're doing what you know to be is your part. You're going every day to the job and don't nobody seem to appreciate you. The folks on the job don't seem to appreciate you. You come home, they don't seem to appreciate you. Come on, anybody relate to what I'm saying? You could be working and you could be laboring and you could be hustling. You could be grinding and it seems like it's to no avail. Hallelujah. He said, I've done it. Master, you, you out here, here you are. Look, Jesus, you, you need to stick to building. You're good at preaching. And you're good at being, building coffee tables because Jesus was a carpenter. And, and he wasn't being a smile at it, but can you just imagine in his mind, like, what, why are you coming for me with this? I haven't been there and done that. I've already tried. You know, I've already tried, but I hear the Holy Spirit say for somebody, and I know I'm talking to somebody, hallelujah, somebody that, you know, out here that's listening, and maybe you've never even seen me before, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit knows who's supposed to come across this video. So perhaps you've been working at your marriage and you're ready to throw the whole towel in. It's divorce time for you. You don't know what else to do. You don't know where else to go. You're putting in the work. You're not getting, feeling the results. Perhaps, again, it's somebody you just tired. You don't understand this Christian wall. It seems like God is being unfair. You're doing all you know to do, and you don't feel like you got paid. You don't feel like you're successful. You don't feel like the years that you've uh, put in, the grind that you've put in, the, uh, the what you've exerted and what you've done does not match your payday. It does not match what you're supposed to get back. You're not getting a harvest on that which you have sown. Um, and, and you keep saying, God, I forgive people. And here here comes somebody else trying to mistreat me. Hallelujah. And you just say, I, I feel this in my spirit that somebody, listen, you've been saying, Dr. Jean, I just pray and pray and pray. Hallelujah. But I don't see the benefit. I don't feel like I'm getting paid. I don't feel like I'm getting the answers. I don't feel like I'm in, getting the results. Hallelujah. I'm fasting and I'm, I'm fasting. I should be bone skinny by now. I fast so often. But where is the payday? Where is 
is the payoff? When do this thing change? When do the manifestation come? When do the peace come? When do the prosperity come? When do the promotion come? I hear this in my spirit when I was studying this today. Amen. That there's people out here that are like Simon Peter. You hustling, you working, you grinding, but you don't feel like you're a success. You don't see the manifestation. Well, hallelujah, you're, you're serving in the church. You're doing everything you've been told to do and you don't see results. Well, I want to say to you, Somebody that's under the sound of my voice, please listen in. I need you to sit on the edge of your seat because this word is for you. Hallelujah. God has sent me with this word for you. You need to say this tonight, right here, right now. Glory to God. You don't see your payday. You haven't seen your, your, your manifestation. You don't feel the value, the appreciation. You don't feel like you got, you got what you're supposed to get coming. Let me tell you something. God is telling me to tell you tonight that if you would give a God, if you would give God a nevertheless, huh? come on somebody. If you would tell God, I did it. I've been there. I've done that. I almost got a t-shirt to prove it. God, I've done that. I've tried that. I've been in a, I, I fasted. I've tied. I've given an offerings. I, I've, I've, I've humbled myself. God, what else do you want from me? I need to see the payday. Tonight, I'm telling you, it is a miracle called Accelerated. <coughs> Excuse me. Accelerated. Hold on. Accelerated abundance for you. I'm going to get this out. There's an anointing of acceleration to come back for you. There is a pay that God will not leave you, hallelujah, ashamed. God will not put you to shame. God will not leave you or forsake you. He will not abandon you. Somebody tonight, even though, yeah, you've done it, even though, yeah, you've been in the pocket, you've been in the pain, even though you've been praying, even though you've been fasting, even though you've been giving, God, I hear the Holy Spirit, I'm telling y'all, saying if you would give God a nevertheless tonight, if you would tell God, nevertheless at your word hallelujah i'm willing to do it again somebody that's getting it say i'm willing to do it again hallelujah because god wants you to do it god wants you to give him a nevertheless see they were doing it but they were they were toiling and they were doing it based on what they know how to do hold on they were doing it based on their <clears throat> on their skill set they were doing it based on their wisdom. They were they were doing it based on their their knowledge of how to 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 fish. Okay? And maybe you've been doing what you've been doing it and it seemed like it's all dried up. Maybe you've been doing for your family the best you know how to do and it seems like it's just not enough. Well, God knows the same the same fish y'all. The same fish Amen. That was there, was there all the time. But God knows exactly what you need to do. It's at the word of the Lord that things come together. Come on, somebody. When God told him to go a little deeper, and I hear Holy Ghost saying this to me, you about ready to stop praying. I want to encourage you, don't stop praying. Baby, all you need to do is go a little deeper. You need to pray a little more. Don't stop praying, my friend. Uh, some of y'all are like, I'm ready. What's the point of fasting? I fasted before. I fasted that last time and that other time. <laughs> I haven't seen results yet. God is saying, nevertheless, if you go out a little deeper, if you just don't give up, nevertheless, at the word of God, do it again. I, just tell God, I'm willing to do it again. At your word, Father, I'm willing to do it again again. Come on, say that with me. I'm willing to do it again. Glory to God. Amen. I am willing to do it again. And so God wants you to come out further. Come out into the deep. Come on. See, some blessings you can't get in the shallow water. Mm. Some blessings are so massive. They're so great. See, that's what accelerated is. It means that it, it, it takes the, the, the equation of time in the twinkling of an eye, what he could not manifest all night long. Come on. 
all the labor that he couldn't manifest. Listen, one favor from God can offset all your labor. Glory to God. You can work 40, 50 years, and then the twinkling of an eye, all you need is one word from God. One favor from God will offset all your human labor, all of your effort, all of your praying, all of your fasting. Just come out a little further in the deep with God and give God a nevertheless, I'm willing to do it again. Hallelujah. A nevertheless, God, at your word, I'm going to try this thing again. Nevertheless, I don't get it. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't see it. I, I don't know how this is happening. But nevertheless, at thy word. Hallelujah. Somebody shout at thy word. Glory to God. At, at thy, thy word. word. At thy word. God is, he said, uh, uh, Peter told him, he said, Master, I done been, I've been hustling. I've been grinding. I've been out here. I didn't did this thing. I didn't put out my best bait. <laughs> I didn't put out my best nets. I didn't make my best maneuvers in the water. And all night long, I've labored. I've toiled. I I've tinkered. I've tried. And I've executed, glory to God, everything I know to do. But he said, nevertheless, at thy word. Glory to God. Nevertheless, at thy word. I want you to understand, it's time to cast your net again. It's time to pray again. It's time to come to the altar again. Don't stop giving. Uh, I tried giving. Now, listen, nevertheless, obey God. If you are willing to do it again, you will see a miracle. If you're willing to just try it again, you're going to see the hand of God move. Sometimes when you are ready to give up and fold up your net, when you are ready to give up and put in your resignation for ministry, ooh, I'm talking to somebody. When you're ready to give up and quit on, on life, when you're ready, you are this close to that thing blowing up. Mm, you are this, you are right there. Be, all you got to do is be willing to obey his word. You got to be willing at his word to do it again. You got to be willing to come, amen, and throw that net in one more time. You got to be willing to come back and get your knees again. You got to be willing to do it again at his word. At the See, every miracle, every accelerated, abundant, manifested miracle will come at the obedience of being willing to do what the master said. And so when Peter said, Master, I did, I've been there, but I will do it again. At your word, and only because you said so, I'm going to try it again. I want to submit to somebody tonight, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying, tonight, Today or whenever you're viewing this, do it again. At my word, do it again. I'm telling you to do it again. God don't want you to cast in, amen, and quit. God don't want you to throw in the towel and give up. God doesn't want you, amen, to lay down your ministry and walk away. Mm. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you to give up on your dreams. God don't want you to th throw in the towel and go, it has not happened. I, I've been doing this. Y'all don't know. I'm I'm exhausted. I'm 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 tired. I have nothing else in me. Well, thanks be to Jesus that the Holy Spirit has in him. Do you know the Bible is so amazing and wonderful? Do you know what it says? It says, praise the Lord. It says, let everything that have <sighs> breath. <sighs> Praise ye the Lord. Do you know what breath is? That's like getting a CPR from heaven. Come on. It's like getting oxygen from heaven. When you praise the Lord, your oxygen come back. Your levels normalize. Your blood pressure stabilize. God can give you CPR if you would just use that breath. Ah, hallelujah. And praise ye the Lord. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. That is supernatural oxygen from on high. Hallelujah. Your strength will come back. Your energy will come back. Your praise will come back. Your joy will come back. Glory to God because you're in the presence of Almighty God. And so when he tells you to do it, just do it. 
every accelerated abundant miracle in all of my all of the scriptures comes from an instruction when God says do do something and when that individual or those people or that community or that nation obeys what he said to do they all came to a point where it was a nevertheless we're losing this battle but nevertheless you will fight for us and God said, the battle's not yours, it's mine, said the Lord. So we have to come to this place where we submit and go, you know what? It don't look like it's going to change. It don't feel like it's going to change. But nevertheless, at your word, I'm willing to do it again. Are you willing, brother? Are you willing, sister, to stay in the fight and do what he says to do for your accelerated, abundant miracle? This was a miracle. I want you to t I want you to understand something too. Don't overlook this. Don't please don't go over the overlooking this thing. This is truly an accelerated abundant miracle. See, your accelerated Peter's like Peter's accelerated abundant miracle was right on the other side of his willingness to get past his tiredness, to get past his fatigue, to get past his frustration to get past his overwork it overworked self and says God at your word I'm willing to just do it again at your word I'm willing and in the twinkling of an eye y'all I realized this for the first time today <laughs> I've read this so many many times but I realized today for the very first time that this right here this supernatural, abundantly accelerated, abundant miracle that Jesus Christ gave to Peter, it was a boat, it was a multitude of fish that at the, just because Jesus says do it, the fish who Jesus created came and started jumping in the boat. Jump once they fill up the nets, the Bible says the nets break, and then the fish begin to jump over in the boat. Y'all better come on to the point. Now you gotta wrap your brain around this to the point where his boat was sinking. Can you wrap your mind around how many thousands of fish it will take to sink a boat? The Bible says not only was his boat sinking, his partner's boat was also sinking that is a haul and a half y'all that's abundant that ain't just a few fish that's not enough for the friday fish a uh, fry hallelujah that is some stuff you gonna retire and your kids can retire from that money that haul was so significant it was an accelerated multiplied abundant miracle and it took place y'all listen in the twinkling of an eye hallelujah only at the obedience listen the fish did not come jesus didn't stand over there and say fish cometh he did not he didn't said i command in the, my name every fish in this lake Come, every fish in this sea, come. Jesus didn't say that. Let me tell you how the miracle happened. Here, my dear friend, is how the miracle happened. Jesus said, put your net out again. Go out a little deeper. Can you get a little deeper in this thing and go out a little further in this thing? Do a little more than you did, hallelujah, earlier and yesterday and last time. If I could get you to do a little more than you did before, hallelujah, and you just obey. It's when Peter obeyed. Come on, somebody. See, faith without works is dead. Peter didn't feel like doing it, but he did it because he believed in Jesus. Sometimes you got to get your feelings out of that. Was he tired? Yeah. Was he frustrated? Yeah. Was he exhausted? Yeah. Hallelujah. But you got to get your feelings out of it and come straight with your faith. He did it. He said, nevertheless, at your word, and because he had faith in Jesus, he put that net out again and the fish filled the nets up. Hallelujah. To massive capacity, the next breath as they were trying to pull the nets up he said oh my god look at this and the bible said, the fish once the nets were broke the fish start hopping into the boat into the ship to the point it start weighing they was like oh wait 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 they calling for other people to come let me tell you something and i saw this for the first time today for the very first time in the twinkling of an eye he made peter a overnight success my God. Anybody, let me tell you, God can take you from rags 
to riches. God can take you from, listen, from poverty, hallelujah, and struggle, glory to God, and low bullshit, tada, to overnight success. We've seen this over and over and over. God can take you from being on the critical list to walking out healed and whole. He told the man, this is Minister Tony's favorite story. He told the man, the paralytic that was at the pool of Bethesda, he said, do you want to be healed? The man said, I've been here 38 years and everybody gets healed before me. Nobody's here to help me. Jesus said, that man, now, do you want to be healed? And the, he said, then take up your bed. Pick up your bed. What you was lying on, you now pick it up. Ah, your bullshit. What is God saying? You and I could become an overnight success. In the twinkling of an eye, he could change our trajectory, change our situation. You don't have to live in what you live in because you lived in it forever. You don't have to continue to go through and experience what you experienced and went through forever. God is here with an accelerated. I mean, he do it when you and I obey. When we obey, if you can just get up and go a little further, if you can go a little deeper, hallelujah, and if you can just give God enough of your willingness to do it again, hallelujah, God just need to see your faith in action, that God, I don't care, and you got to get your feelings out of it, don't care how I feel, yeah, I'm tired, yeah, I'm hurt. Yeah, I'm frustrated. Oh, Shikonda. But at your word, never let us, because ladies and gentlemen, your suddenly, your miracle, your accelerated abundance, that life changing one time thing. The woman who had her husbands, who, who was a mighty man that served the man of God, a loyal man, dies, but he had made a debt. And he said, if I don't pay the debt, here's collateral. I got some real strong boys. <laughs> if I don't pay the debt, come get them boys. Let them work for you for 10, 20 years. <laughs> that would be the equivalent to pay off my debt. And he drops dead, and now there's no way to pay the debt. And the wife says, oh, my God. She goes to the prophet, to the man of God, and says, getting ready, they're getting ready, master, to take my sons as slaves. What do I do? And he says, woman, what you got? Huh, what do you got? She said, my Lord, I have nothing, nothing but this small vial of oil. That's all I got in the house. He said, well, go and borrow it. Listen, not a few, but as many vessels. Huh, here's a bull shot. Close the door. And you know what she did at, at his word? She, and she listened to the instructions and her miracle for retirement, to retire a rich, wealthy woman in prominence came from obeying the willingness. And she had cried. She was grieving. Her husband was dead. She was grieving. She didn't have no money. She was broke and broke in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And she said, but if the man of God said, do this, I'm doing it. And she closed the door and it, she poured from that little veil. And as she poured, it just, it wouldn't stop. The Bible said every time they put a vessel in front of her, more poured. And it says, and the oil stayed and continuously poured. And she said, bring me another one. And they said, mother, there are no more. We, we, we've exhausted. We, we borrowed every vessel we can from all of the neighbors. And now we have no more. And she looked and the last drop came out of that same, same small vial of oil. How, you can't explain that. And she goes and she tells the prophet, I did what you said to do. Now what? Further instructions. And know what he said? Now go and sell and then live off the rest. She sold that oil. She went into the oil business. Y'all better come on. She went into the oil business and she sold it for profit. Went and paid the debt of her husband. Hallelujah. Echo Shedda and her and her boys retired off the rest. Y'all better come on. That's accelerated. Overnight success. Overnight success. Hallelujah. It comes on the heels of your being willing to obey what you heard. To be, to be just willing to follow through and do what God says to do. 
And so we see that this, hallelujah, these great multitude, that's what the Bible called it, a great multitude of fish. And let me make this point before I close. Hallelujah. That's really accelerated abundance. When you go from here to there, hmm, when you go from lacking to have nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. God meets the need. He's the all-sufficient one. And it's all taken care of. Hallelujah. But are you willing to come a little deeper? How you do Are you willing at the master's command? Are you willing to do? Because I hear God saying, don't give up. I hear the Lord saying, don't quit. Listen, hallelujah. It's three things that I noticed in the conclusion of this story. Three things that I that God, the Holy Spirit, put it pointed out to me that I was I don't think I was acutely aware of them before. And here's those three uh, three things. When God, whenever you are willing to give God a nevertheless and just be willing to do what he instructs you to do. When you and I are willing to do that thing that makes us uncomfortable, okay, but we're willing to obey God, so we're willing and we do it anyway. The Holy Spirit will not leave that thing unrewarded. He won't. So the Holy Spirit did this. There's three things that I noticed, and here they are. Amen. You got to, first of all, understand that this uh, Accelerated abundance is going to leave you in a position and a posture of being blessed. And the only reason that God is going to bless you so abundantly, so largely, so big and so massive. Amen. He says that the, uh, the, 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 the blessings of the Lord, listen, the blessings of the Lord maketh you rich. The blessings of the Lord makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. So it's the blessing that makes you and I to prosper, to get and to come into this abundance, to have this abundant life, this Zoe life. And so it's three things that happen. I saw here when God does that blessing for you, it is never just for you. It's so big. Listen, it's going to incorporate others. That's number one. Your blessing will always benefit somebody else. When Jesus gives Peter this miracle, them fishes jumping in the boat, his boat starts sinking, and he says, hey, and he waves and says, come, help a brother out. And now he's got enough. He's got so much significantly, that, and nobody never seen him. People on the shore are going, they, they witnessing it. It is people that will see, oh, Holy Spirit, come on, do that. It is people that will see your abundance. They're going to see your significance. They're going to see, and they're going to look and go, look what God has done, Jesus. Can you see it? It's three things here. you got to be in a position now where you're going to have to ask for some help. Your blessings is going to be so big, you're going to need help to contain them. It's never just about you. You're going to have to ask for help. Number one, you're going to have to ask for help. Number two, you're going to have to be re willing to receive some help. Because your blessings are going to be too big. When God gives you this significant abundance, you need help with it. When God wants to fulfill that dream and make that thing come to fruition, you're going to need help with it. So you're going to have to be willing to ask for help. You're going to have to be willing to receive help. And then you're going to have to be willing to give help. So when we see Peter, this thing ends with such an incredible Amen. Such an incredible manner. This is what Peter says. It says that when Simon saw what happened, he fell down at Jesus. He fell down at Jesus on his knees and said, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he was so astonished at all that were with him at the drought of those great multitude of fishes, which they had just taken. And so was all also astonished James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were his partners with Simon. And Jesus said to him, do y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? It says not only was he astonished at his miracle, his friends were astonished. His partners were astonished. Ah, his neighbors saw it. 
Hey, glory to God. The community saw it like they never seen nothing like that before. <laughs> this was the greatest fishing day in the world. The greatest fishing day in the world. And here's what Jesus tells me. I, amen. He says in verse 10, fear not. Jesus tells Peter, because Peter's just freaking out. He said, I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. I, I thought I knew. I thought I had skills. I thought I knew how to win. I thought I knew how to fish. I thought I was good at this. He said, but this right here was supernatural. This right here, the fish was, they, they, did, they never did stop. Had they not pulled up, <laughs> they surely would have lost both boats, both ships. They'd have lost both ships in the water. Had they not pulled back up to the shore, they'd have, super, they'd have lost both ships because the fish kept following them. The fish kept coming. And Jesus told him, said, and Peter's worshiping him. He's going, you are God. You, 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 I never, I, just get away from me. I never seen nothing like this. This is incredible. You are incredible. This is supernatural. And he's, he's worshiping. Peter's on his knees in the boat worshiping. <laughs> and it says he was astounded. And he was astonished. And it says, and so was James. And John was likewise. They all go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know when, um, who was it? Oh, my God. Who was it? Queen of Sheba came to check on Solomon. And they say she passed out. They was like, oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Had to give her a little water and smelling salt. She said, I ain't never seen nothing like this. When God does in your life. And he blesses your life with a supernatural, abundant miracle. People around you will be going, oh, my God. It will make them know that you didn't do that yourself. It will make them know. This was a, do y'all realize this was a business deal? This was an entrepreneur. This was a businessman. This was his livelihood. Hallelujah. And God, now God makes him the, the who can define for me great multitudes of fish? Mm. Who can do it? Who can put the price tag on great multitudes? How much money was that worth? Who had ever, he, he's never seen it. He's been a fisherman all his life. He's never encountered anything before or since. And then Jesus tells him, he says, fear not. Because he's there crying. Peter's just rocking in the boat. He cried. The fish slapping him all in the face. <laughs> and he cried. He's like, you are God. Oh my, I've never seen anything like this. Why? Because he went from struggle. Hey, listen. He went from struggle to success. Overnight success. And what he couldn't make happen for himself. He was not one of them folks that say, I'm a self-made man, a self-made millionaire. He said, God, this is your doing, and it's marvelous in my eyes. He gave God all the praise. He gave God all the credit. He knew that it was God and not him himself. He knew it wasn't his efforts. And so he's worshiping God, and Jesus told him, fear not, Peter. Fear not. Hallelujah. He said, because from henceforth, I'm going to teach you to catch men. Ah, here we go. Jesus is saying, your prosperity, I want you to have it. Your abundance, I want you to have it. Your blissful life, absolutely. That's the Zoe life. I want you to have prominence. I want you to be successful. And I'm going to do it in front of all of your haters. I'm going to make sure everybody around get to see your name go up in the marquee. Your name up in lights. I want everybody to just watch you. Hallelujah. And see you blow up. God wants to uh, prosper you. And he will do it in the presence of your haters and your enemies. God wants people to see you blow up. You know why? Because he's going to get the glory. Because us that will not be... Uh, erroneous enough to think that we are safe, self-made anything will say, God, I realize that I am where I am because I followed a nevertheless. Hallelujah. I followed your leading. You made me and not me myself. You created me. You blew me up. You blessed me. You postured me for greatness. And I give you all the glory. I'm not a self-made nothing. You made me. Hallelujah. And I give you all the credit and I give you all the glory. And so Jesus tells him, he said, I want you to have all that. But here's the deal. 
Now I'm going to make you a fisher of men. If you were impressed with that, watch what I show you. How to catch people for the kingdom. How to get people into right standing with me. How to do the thing that is the most valuable thing, most prominent thing that you could ever do. I'm going to share this thing with you so that you can share this thing with others. That's what it's about. You are blessed to be a blessing. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take away this not tonight, this truth right here. Are you willing to give God a nevertheless are you willing to say, at thy word? Because the Bible says, if you're willing, this is Isaiah 1 and 19. If you're willing and obedient, then you will eat the good of all the land. God got great prosperity for you. God got miracles, signs, and wonders. And y'all, they're right on the other side of the shallow water. Stay in here deep with God. Come closer to God. You know when the miracle happened, when Jesus dismissed, after the benediction, when he dismissed the other people, then it was just about him and Peter. And it's Peter's, it was about him and Peter. Hallelujah. That miracle happened as a, as a, as a sign that this is, a, I'm going to do this for you, and it's about you. And after the other people were gone, you know, they were still lollygagging around on the seashore because they saw that too. But Jesus was done dealing with them, and he turns to Peter. Can you get a little deeper with God? Y'all, I know some things in life, sometimes you get frustrated, you get tired. Been there and I've done that. But God is, I hear the Holy Spirit say, can you just come out a little deeper? Can you stay with me and pray? Can you still forgive? I know you've done it before and before and before, and like Peter, you just seem like you got nothing. You got jack. You don't have anything to show for it. You're close to your miracle, but it's not in the shallow water. You got to come a little further out. You got to come a little further out. Trust Jesus. Will you trust Jesus? I want to pray with you. Listen, I want to pray with you who are in the struggle and don't feel like you've gotten your pay. Father, I lift up everybody on this video Everybody under the sound of my voice in the struggle who just don't seem like they've gotten what they're due. They're just, they've been cheated. They've been overlooked. They didn't get the promotion. They missed out. The marriage fell. Hallelujah. The relationship fell apart. The kids is going this way. It just doesn't look like they're getting what they're due. Holy Spirit, you're not done with them. You're not through with them, and I know it. I sense it in my spirit that you just want them to come out a little further, that you're the one that paid them, that what they were looking for from man and woman and bosses and companies and corporations and dividends, oh, Holy Ghost, and people that have been cheated out of monies and horrible shake out of Osata and promotions and opportunities, that God, you will give them a Joseph experience, no matter what man did to them, no matter who came against them. Hallelujah, that you will bring them from the pit and from, amen, the penitentiary, amen, man, to the palace. An overnight success. That you would give them a miracle of all miracles. All they need is one miracle from you, God. That will change them forever. Do it, Holy Spirit. Cause their spirit to rise up in Jesus' name. Now, you do your part. You do your part. Yeah, God could have said, fish cometh. He didn't. He told him, you throw your net out. You throw it. God is saying to you, throw your net out again. Forgive again. Come on and pray again. Come on and fast again. Come on and give your offering again. Come on and do the right thing again. But God has a supernatural time for you to come into your accelerated, abundant miracle. I want you to just ride this ride with Jesus to it come to a complete stop. God got great things in store for you. Hey, that's my time. I got to get out of here. I'm Dr. Regina. Thank you. Thank you for riding with me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for coming into agreement with me because we are certainly in alignment and in agreement with you. If you're interested to become a part of our e-church, 
That's the new thing we're doing. Amen. Praise God. No matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of this. Come on. We're going to do a great work for God. We are here to change the trajectory of people's mind, make them hurt, help them to learn how to think better so that they can be better and live better. Amen. Praise God. And that's what God has for you. God got great supernatural things in store for you. Listen, I'm excited. This is happened to be at the time of this taping, Holy Week, and we're getting ready to celebrate resurrection. Praise Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And King of glory. So happy Holy Week to everybody who uh, is, is celebrating Jesus. If you've never made him the Lord, just tell him, I believe in you. Come into my heart. Make my life new. I believe that you were born of a virgin died for my sins on the cross, and rose from the dead. Forgive me. Make me new. In Jesus' name, you are my Lord and Savior. Hold on. No, see, no earthquakes. <laughs> no lightning strikes. But guess what happened? The angels just wrote your name in the book of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So welcome to God's family. Welcome to God's kingdom. We want to be a blessing to you any way we know how. So let me know. Please just leave me a comment. Let me know if you gave Jesus uh, your heart through this video. All right. And we'll get back with you and pray for you. We want to connect to you. Listen, I got to go. I love you so much. I appreciate you. God bless you. And remember that Jesus, amen, amen, will always come through for you. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. I love you. Bye-bye. Come on, life changes. Give God a praise. Isn't he awesome? Amen. Isn't God awesome? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise amen. God. Yes, he is. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>